Hi everyone, um, my name is Carla Plasencia and on behalf of the student world, I welcome you to this live session, Study English in the US with Georgetown University. We're super excited that you're here with us today um, to hear all about this amazing institution. I will just explain super fast how this would work. So um, on the chat, as you're using it now, you can say hi, you can tell us where you're from, where you're just watching us, uh, where are you watching us from, and, um, and all that kind of stuff. And then on your second window, you will see questions. There, if you have any doubts or questions during the presentation, please um, add them there so we can keep track of the presentations um, during this live. And on the third window, you will have the pool section. Um, on the presentation, we will ask you um, some things and you will just go to the pool section and select your answer. Another thing is that I know that the chat has like a notification sound and when it gets too busy, it can be kind of um, disturbing. So just click on your bell that is um, on the bottom right corner. Just click on that to mute the notifications from the chat if it gets annoying for you. And yeah, that's basically it. So now I'm going to introduce you to our presenters from today. First, we have Christina Koenig, um, the program director. Then we have Susan Matula, the director of programs. We also have Stephanie Gallup, the associate director intensive English program. And finally, last but not least, we have Regan Carver, the program manager. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much for being here. And the stage is yours. All right. Thank you so much, Carla, for welcoming us today. Um, and it's so nice uh, to see students uh, from many different countries. Hello to Morocco, uh, Algeria, Lebanon. Egypt, Tunisia, uh, Iraq. I think, I uh, hope there are some other countries out there and, and we'd love to welcome you all to Georgetown University uh, for some programs uh, that are upcoming in our center. Uh, so today in this webinar, um, we are going to share with you the programs that Georgetown University has to offer for English language learners at our English language center. Uh, in Washington, D.C. So our first question is uh, for all of the students who are joining us today, where are you from? And we see that many of you have already started to answer this question. Please keep letting us know. Uh, we're so excited to meet students uh, from many different countries and all around the world. So we want to welcome all of you uh, to Georgetown and to Washington, D.C. And again, my name is Stephanie Gallup. I'm the Associate Director for the Intensive English Programs. And I'm gonna start our session today uh, by uh, introducing some program staff and telling you a little bit about um, Washington and Georgetown. So today we'll do um, a few welcome and polls. We'll ask you some questions. We'll tell you about Georgetown's mission and history We'll tell you about the programs that are coming in spring, summer, and fall 2022. We'll let you know how to apply and give you information about visas for these programs. So let me have um, other staff from the English Language Center introduce themselves. Suzanne? Thank you, Stephanie. Hi, everyone. My name is Suzanne Matula, and I am the Director of Programs, and I'm very excited to see all of you here with us and to share more about our programs. Thank you. Hi there. Uh, hi there. My name is Christina. I am our Program Director for the English Language Center, and I, along with my colleague Regan, can help you with, when, with your application process, and then once you've been admitted, I'll be helping you with your immigration process. Okay, and I've introduced myself, so let's have Regan. Sure, my name is Regan Carver, and I work uh, very closely with Christina Koenig on recruiting uh, future students to the English Language Center, and I'm uh, really excited to tell you more about our programs. 
All right. So before we get started with information, we would like to know something else about the students who have joined us today. So we have a poll question for you. Have you visited or studied in the United States? So if you answer this question, you can tell us that you have studied, you have visited, you have done both, or you've never visited or studied in the US. So this poll question is live for students to answer. Please let us know uh, so we can really um, talk to you and uh, tell you about um, the programs that we have for you at Georgetown. And is the poll live? Okay. So we have another poll as well. And our next poll um, is to ask everyone how many years have you been using English? How many years have you been using English? Um, so this means you're speaking it um, in your personal life or for work or for education, for any reason, um, how long have you been using, uh, using English? So this poll is also live right now um, and we'll take a look at your answers a little bit later in the presentation. So now I'm gonna pass the presentation to Regan, who'll tell you a little bit more about life at Georgetown and Washington, DC. Thanks so much, Stephanie. Uh, we're really excited that you're participating in today's webinar um, so that we can share information about life in DC and the many English language programs that Georgetown offers for students like you from around the world. Next slide, please. At Georgetown University, we build upon two centuries of mission-driven education. In particular, the Georgetown University English Language Center promotes academic excellence in teaching and learning that's guided by a Jesuit commitment to diversity and tolerance and respect for the individual. We hope that you'll make the decision to come and study with us in one of the most dynamic capital cities of the world. And our downtown Washington DC campus is steps from many historical landmarks and major government institutions where you can visit and learn when not in class. And within the last 10 years, Washington DC has become a destination for tourists seeking great restaurants, theaters, outdoor movies and festivals, and also students like you that wanna take advantage of these great uh, attractions as well. For those of you who enjoy the outdoors, like I do, Washington DC was recently voted number one for city parks in the United States. Whether you like biking, running, uh, running on trails, kayaking, or even horseback riding, there's something for you in the Washington DC area. And we have another poll. We'd like to know what are your goals for studying English? Take a little bit for folks to answer that. And uh, as folks uh, finish up, I'll turn turn the floor back to my colleague, Stephanie Gallup. Thank you so much, Regan, for telling us all this great information about life in Washington, DC. So we can see from the poll results uh, that just over half of participants are interested in English for improving professional um, or job related purposes. Um, and uh, getting close to 40% are interested in pursuing a university degree. 
Uh, we definitely have programs and a lot of students in these categories that come to us at Georgetown, but we also have students who come to improve for personal reasons. So no matter your choice in the poll, we definitely have a program for you. So before I tell you a little bit about uh, some of the uh, programs that we have at Georgetown, I want to let everyone know what our operating status is or what the environment is like if you come to study in person at Georgetown. You can see right here, this picture was taken just last week at one of our student activities and events. And you can see that these students are having a great time interacting and socializing with their classmates. So during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the university uh, and Washington DC is very concerned with public health and safety. Student safety is a big priority at Georgetown University. So even though all classes are planned to be in person, we are giving in-person classes right now at Georgetown. It is required that all students must be vaccinated for COVID-19. This is a university requirement, and we've had this requirement in place since the beginning of fall, and the numbers at Georgetown University have been very good. Students are healthy, and we feel very comfortable that you will be safe studying at Georgetown University. So now I'd like to tell you a little bit more about some of the programs that we have to offer at Georgetown English Language Center. And I'll start by telling you about the intensive English programs at Georgetown. The intensive English programs are for full-time students who come to Georgetown University for eight week terms, and they're looking to improve for personal reasons, for university degrees, or for professional re uh, reasons. In the intensive English program, our courses are taught in eight weeks and when you finish one level, then you can continue for another eight weeks to move to your next level. Some students will stay for 18 weeks. Some students will stay for 32 weeks. It depends on how much time you have and how far you have to go to reach your goals. All of our intensive English programs are taught in small interactive classes and we integrate all language skills. So if you take a reading class, you will also be doing writing, but you'll also have opportunities to discuss your readings in class and practice your speaking and your vocabulary skills. We make sure that our courses have very engaging topics. We talk about a variety of fields and themes because students who come to our programs have many different life experiences, professional backgrounds, and interests. All of our students in our programs receive individual feedback on their writing and speaking. You receive grades on your assignments, but you also get comments from faculty and you have an opportunity to attend office hours so you can meet faculty one-on-one -on -one to discuss how to improve. In all of our classes, they are student-centered, which means that students spend a lot of time speaking in class. This might be in pairs or it might be in small group discussion. So you are constantly practicing your English language skills. A schedule in our intensive English program, these are our eight week sessions, is something like this. In the morning, you'll take a reading and writing class for about two and a half hours. Then midday, there is a break time where students can complete homework, can do independent study, can visit professors in office hours or attend workshops, and of course, take a break and have lunch. In the afternoon, we have classes uh, in grammar, we have classes in speaking, and we have classes in communication skills. All students will take these classes in the afternoon, and they'll also be about two and a half hours. After classes, we encourage students to continue their study at home or on campus in many of the study areas that we have available. And we also have a social calendar and events for students to participate in so you can speak more with others and you can also explore Washington DC. 
Our day begins at nine o'clock in the morning and classes end at 3.30 in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. If you are interested in improving your uh, English language for personal reasons, our intensive language and culture track might be the right program for you. For students who want to improve their skills while also understanding a little bit more about US culture and how to communicate in a variety of culture, culture and settings, the intensive language culture program is for you. Students can build their confidence in speaking and short writing you can learn strategies for discussion and for email or virtual communication, and you'll strengthen your foundational English language skills that will prepare you if you decide to continue for academic and professional English. This program is ideal for students uh, who are at the CIFR A2, which is a beginning level, to B1, which is about an intermediate level. If you are looking to pursue uh, a university degree and you need English for this goal, then we would like to invite you to the Intensive Academic English track. In this track, you'll develop the academic skills that you need to transition into academic life at a US college or university. Students in this track will learn how to write an academic essay and research paper, will learn how to give academic presentations, and we'll learn how to take notes with academic reading and lecture listening material. These students will have further courses in grammar, leadership, or other special topics to continue practicing your skills and speaking at a higher level. We offer a variety of workshops and lecture series with experts in the field, so students get the real experience of being a university student in the United States. Students are required to be at at least a CIFR B1 level or intermediate level to enroll in this track. If you're unable to enroll at this level, then we will have you take a term or so in language and culture to prepare you to be ready for the rigor of this program. Finally, if you're looking to improve for professional or job related reasons, Washington DC is a great place to be. In our intensive professional English program, we help students refine the English skills they already have while understanding US professional practices in business and public policy, as well as help you develop critical leadership and networking skills that you need for success in work environments. Our program specializes in looking at NGOs and research, research institutes or think tanks and we have topic focus in our courses on leadership, organizations, public policy, and sometimes law. For students in the professional English track, we require a CIFR B2 or high intermediate English level to enroll. And you're welcome to enroll in one of our other courses before that to improve your proficiency before you get to this level. And so now that I've given you information on these programs, my colleague, Christina, will tell you a little bit more about the admissions process to join us. Thank you, Stephanie. Sorry. Um, so as previously mentioned, all of our intensive programs run on eight-week sessions with openings in January, March, May, August, and October. Uh, here you can see our program dates for the upcoming uh, 2022 sessions. Uh, as well as the application deadlines. Um, our next available session to apply for is our spring one session, uh, which is starting in early January. And the deadline for this program is December 1st. But due to long visa um, embassy wait times for visa appointments, I would not, I highly advise do not wait to the deadline to submit your application as you still will have to apply for your uh, form I-20. All right, so how to apply. Uh, in order to apply to our program, you must submit your, your online application. This includes a copy of your transcript with course grades in English, showing proof of completion of secondary school or of university studies beyond a secondary school. Uh, a TOEFL or IELTS school score is not required, but it is recommended if you've already taken this test, um, just so we can know approximately your current level. And yes, you can still be admitted to the program without providing a TOEFL or an IELTS score. 
And lastly, there was a $75 application fee. Uh, once you have been admitted to the program, you should accept your enrollment and pay the $200 tuition deposit fee online. This tuition deposit is applied to your tuition once you enroll in the program. Uh, and then all newly admitted students are required to take an online placement test to confirm their English proficiency level prior to the Form I-20 issuance. If, you're, if you require F-1 visa support, I will assist you in applying for this separately once you have been admitted to the program. And below in here, you're, you'll see um, if you wish to apply now or you wish to see our, all of our applications, save this link. We'll send it in the chat later on. All right, so for the immigration process, sorry, my screen froze. Um, so all of our intensive English programs require students to enroll full-time international students who require visa support to enter the U.S. and study in a full-time program must apply for F-1 visa support, which is the Form I-20. Uh, this is a separate application process from the program. Once you have been admitted and you have accepted your enrollment, you will receive an email with step-by-step -step instructions on how to apply for this form, this uh, document. Uh, to apply for the Form I-20, you must submit submission sufficient financial documentation, a copy of your passport information page, and an applicant information form. Uh, once all documents have been reviewed and accepted, the Form I-20 is typically issued within three to five business days, and the I-20 is required to apply and interview for an F-1 visa at a U.S. consulate or embassy uh, in your home country. And once you travel to the U.S., you will need both the I-20 and the F-1 visa, along with your passport, uh, to enter the U.S. And if you have any questions regarding um, your specific immigration process, uh, just email us and we can help you one-on-one. -on -one. Sorry. Um, so as I previously mentioned, the estimated visa wait times across the world have been uh, delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, if you go to this site, you can view the local or the current wait times or the estimated times within your home country. Uh, if you require F-1 visa support and you need to apply for the Form I-20, you will need to show sufficient funding per eight-week sessions when you are, when you wish to enroll. Uh, the, es the estimated expenses for one eight-week session is just over ten thousand U.S. dollars. Uh, the tuition for one eight-week session is four thousand six hundred sixty-eight dollars, and then the living and personal expenses is an estimated cost. So depending on your spending habits, you may spend more. You sp may spend less. You eat out every night, you're obviously going to be spending more money. Um, but this is just an estimated amount uh, that all students must show in order to apply for the I-20. Then I would like to pass it back over to my colleague, Stephanie, who will speak to you about our American Conversational English program. Thank you, Christina. I just want to address a few questions uh, that we have about some of the programs that we have in person. So the programs that Christina and I are describing right now, these are all in person. These are not online classes. The majority of our programs are in person, but we'll share more about online classes later in the presentation. I also want to note that Georgetown University welcomes students from all religious backgrounds. You are welcome here. We have students who come from all around the world and many different religions who are comfortable and working together at Georgetown University. So with that, I'd like to tell you about a shorter program that we have. Our previous programs mentioned were eight weeks that happen in fall, spring, and summer. We have a three-week program that we offer in the summer only called American Conversational English. We invite students to come in the summer for a full-time program where you will practice uh, your uh, speaking English in lessons combined with practical field trips where you go to visit major DC landmarks and venues to practice speaking English in real settings. These are also very small class sizes, so you have the most opportunities to speak with an emphasis on conversational American English with vocabulary, grammar, and discussion strategies. This course is also, uh, also includes a variety of interesting topics with all of your instructors with expertise in linguistics and language instruction. 
Christina will share now a few more details about how to apply for the American Conversational English program. Thank you, Stephanie. So as Stephanie mentioned, this uh, American Conversational English program is offered during our summer. The deadline to apply for this program is June 1st. As this is a full-time pro full program in person, students will need to apply for immigration support and provide sufficient funding. For this pro program, students will need to show just under uh, $5,000 when applying for the Form I-20. So that's $4,689. Um, and again, this is just estimated. The only fees you are required to pay is the tuition uh, and then the health insurance, which uh, once you enroll. All right. And similar to the intensive programs, in order to apply, you must submit an online application to the program. Uh, and, uh, once you're admitted, all students are required to take an online placement test to confirm their English proficiency level. And then after you have completed this, uh, you, have, you will be able to apply for the Form I-20. And the immigration process is the same as well, uh, is the same for all of our programs. To apply for the Form I-20, you must submit um, sufficient financial documentation, a copy of your passport information page, and applicant information form. Uh, once all documents have been reviewed and accepted, the Form I-20 is typically issued within three to five days. Uh, and the Form I-20, again, is uh, required to apply an interview for the F-1 visa at a U.S. embassy or consulate. And when you travel to the U.S., you'll use your passport your, with your visa and your Form I-20 to enter the U.S. And again, apply as early as possible to avoid visa delays. Uh, there have been many uh, consulate closures as long, well as long delays at many at U.S. embassies and consulates. And then now I will pass it over to my colleague, uh, Suzanne, to speak to you about a boot camp course to help students prepare uh, for a graduate, if they're going to study in a graduate, U.S. graduate program. Great, thank you, Christina. And I'm excited to share with you an additional program that we will be offering this summer in person at the Georgetown campus. And this is a, an in-person graduate student boot camp. If you have been admitted or are thinking of applying for a graduate program within the US and you might be interested in polishing your language skills even more to be prepared for graduate study for success in your graduate program, this might be a program for you. And we invite you to uh, seriously consider this program. This is a program that we have specifically designed for students who have been admitted to a U.S. graduate program. Next slide, please. Thank you. So this program is called our English Skills for Graduate Students. In this program, you will receive intensive practice in reading university texts. This can include journal articles, textbook chapters, and case studies. You will participate in class and get practice participating in classes with question and answer, uh, teamwork, group work, group discussions, and also participate in team meetings. This class also really focuses on your ability to develop and also deliver oral presentations. We have found that all of these skills are very important for students to be successful in graduate programs and that students often need a little extra polishing with these skills to prepare them for their program. Next slide, please. So in this program, you will be writing short reports and summaries and also using appropriate source referencing styles to attribute your work appropriately. You will practice listening to lectures and discussions while taking effective notes. You will also be critically analyzing information from texts and audio sources and also to start assimilating and synthesizing and make connections across these different texts and also making a connection back to your own field and your own culture. Uh, next slide, please. 
So here again, within our English Skills for Graduate program, this is a three-week full-time program. The summer program is coming up. The application deadline is May 1st to apply. The program starts, as you can see, on July 5th and it ends on July 6th. It's a three-week full-time program, and this prepares you to then go in to your graduate program, whether your graduate program is at Georgetown University or at another university. And now I'd like to turn it back to Christina, who will be sharing additional information about applying for this program. Christina. Thank you, Suzanne. Uh, so to apply to the English Skills for Graduate Students program, uh, you must submit an online application uh, along with your admission letter to a graduate program within the U.S. Uh, once you have been admitted to the program, you will need to submit, uh, accept your enrollment to begin your immigration process. And as again, as this is a full-time program. It does require students to apply for the F-1 visa support. Uh, the application is the same as our previous programs that we talked about. So to apply for the Form I-20, you need to uh, show sufficient funding, provide a copy of your passport and the applicant information form. And then students who enroll in this program then continue to another institution for their graduate school do not need two I-20s. I will work, you will just need one I-20 uh, issued by us. And then once you complete this program, I will work with you on what's called a CVISH transfer. Uh, to your new school. And then now I am going to pass it uh, back over to my colleague who will speak to you about some of the online, our online and hybrid uh, programs. Um, pass it back over to Stephanie. Sorry about that. My camera was having an issue. So the next program that I'd like to share with you is about our American Conversational English program. Earlier, I shared with you the in-person program, but now I'd like to tell you about an online opportunity that you have for improving your conversational English skills. So our online program is delivered remote, which means you can connect from your home anywhere in the world. The online conversational English program also has small class sizes with an emphasis on conversational American English with vocabulary, grammar, and discussion strategies, just like the in-person program. We have a variety of interesting topics to match our students' backgrounds and needs, and the same instructors teach in the in-person program as they do in the online program. In this program, students will have the most opportunities to speak and you will have uh, feedback and correction from your instructor live and prepared notes available online each day. This experience is modeled after our in-person program to provide you with a similar opportunity, but from the comfort of your own home. If you'd like to apply for this program, Christina will share a few more details about that. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, so this, again, is an online version of our American Conversational English program, uh, which will run for three weeks starting in late June. Uh, this is a part-time online course. Uh, the tuition for this program is $775, and classes are Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. Uh, to 11 a.m. all Eastern Standard Times. Uh, the deadline to apply for this program is June 1st. And then how to apply for this program. Uh, the application process for this program is different from the other programs I've previously talked about. Uh, for this program, students will register and pay for the course at the time of registration. Uh, once you register for the course, you will receive confirmation along with the Zoom link to log into the program. And you can see the link uh, listed here. Uh, you can access our um, all of our applications. And then next, I will pass it back over to my colleague, Suzanne, who will speak to you about our, our TEFL certificate program. 
Great. Thank you, Christina. And I wanted to share an additional program with you that is hybrid, both online and an in-person component. And this is our Teaching English as a Foreign Language, or TEFL, certificate program. I saw in the chat and in some of the questions that some of you are perhaps interested in receiving a certificate to teach English. Um, and we have a TEFL certificate program that may be of interest to you. Uh, this program is a semester long or 14 week long program that we offer online with an in-person teaching component. In this program, you will learn how to teach listening, speaking, reading, writing, vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation. You will get practice and theory with using a communicative, student-centered approach to teaching to really help motivate your students and help them become very engaged with the language learning process. You will also have a lot of experience with planning your lessons so that each lesson has clear goals and objectives and has a great deal of variety with the activities in each lesson. Uh, next slide, please. So in this program, you will learn how to effectively use textbooks, media, technology, and other authentic materials and tools to help your students learn. You'll see how to combine traditional and contemporary teaching skills and resources, and also be able to effectively assess and evaluate your students' achievement and their learning of the language. You will have an opportunity to develop strong foundations in second language acquisition theories and best practices. And also, you will learn how to develop skills to teach online as well as in person. And this component of the program is the online component, and it runs for 14 weeks. Okay, next slide, please. In addition to the online component, there is an in person component, and this is the practicum part of the program, which is the practice for actually teaching in person. In this program, you will also have 10 hours of supervised teaching experience. You will be in a classroom with real students teaching them, and you will be observed by the instructor who will be giving you feedback and guidance and additional ideas to help you improve your teaching. You will receive support and help with your lesson planning and the materials that you will develop to teach in this practicum. You will get extensive feedback from the instructor and also from your peers in the program. And at the end of this program, you will develop a final portfolio with lesson plans, a philosophy of teaching, and other materials that you will be able to have and share as you go forth as an English language teacher. Next slide. Um, so as you can see here, this practicum is in person. There are two options for the practicum. There is a one week intensive practicum experience that meets Monday through Friday, the entire day, and there is visa support for this program. This one week intensive program is only available in the spring semester. So starting in spring of 2022. In addition, we also have an opportunity for the practicum teaching to happen on five Saturdays. So five Saturdays in a row, you would come onto campus for your practicum teaching experience. Next slide, please. 
Okay. And here you can see some of the dates for the practicum and also the terms of study. So our next opportunity to participate in this program will be in the spring of 2022. The application deadline is December 1st. The program will start in January, on January 5th, and it will end at the beginning of May, on May 3rd. We will also offer this program in the fall. The application deadline will be August 1st. The program will begin in late August and end in mid-December. Now I'd like to turn the floor back over to my colleague, Christina, to share with you more information about applying for this program. Christina. Thank you, Suzanne. Uh, so if you're inter interested in our TEFL certificate program, which is the Teaching English as a Foreign Language certificate program, uh, you will need to submit an online application along with the required supporting documents. All applicants must have earned at least a bachelor's degree or are in their final year, uh, their undergraduate degree. International degrees must be submitted with a transcript evaluation. And if your first language is not English, you must submit a recent TOEFL or IELTS score. Uh, once admitted, all non-native English speakers are required to take a writing exam and an oral interview, which are done online. And then lastly, uh, if we, I see a lot of students already at, uh, putting in questions, but if you have any questions, type your questions in the, actually the questions box. Um, and then uh, here's our contact information. You can contact us by phone, WhatsApp, or email. Uh, we hope you will follow us on social media to learn more about our programs and all the exciting events our current students are actually participating in now. Thank you very much, guys. Now um, we have a few minutes for questions. The first one that is repeating a lot is if they have to submit everything in English for the application process. So yes, so your transcripts for any of the programs should be in English. Um, if there's ever a question, you are welcome to submit them in your foreign language. And if we have, if I will, we as in, if I have any questions, I will contact you and have you either get the transcript evaluated um, and we'll move forward from there. Awesome. Thank you very much, Christina. The next question is that if they need to um, have a visa for any of the courses, like a student visa. Yes. So majority, so all of the in-person classes, um, the fully in-person classes do require students to be on an F1 visa. So you will, once you are applied to the program, and then you accept your admission. We'll help you with the process for the app, the application process for the form I-20. Now we do have, we did talk about a few programs that are not, do not require visa support because they are either online, the online programs like our American Conversational English program do not require visa support because you will attend those classes online from your home. And then the TEFL certificate program is a hybrid. So you take the first part of the program online from your home and then if you attend the one week practicum, we can work with you on visa support. Awesome, thank you very much. Um, about the vaccine, they, they are asking if they, they need to be already vaccinated from their home country or they can get the vaccine when they arrive to DC. So currently at Georgetown University, uh, our vaccine requirements are uh, an FDA or WHO approved vaccine. Um, if you come to the United States without receiving the vaccine before coming to Georgetown University, um, we can let you know your options for getting vaccinated in Washington, D.C. Um, I can let some of my other colleagues describe a little bit more of that process if they have more details, but the vaccine is a requirement and we will inform you during your application process about the specific vaccines that are um, allowed under this requirement. Thank you, Stephanie. 
Um, another question here is that if you have any financial aid or any like payment plans or anything related to that. So our program, we do not have any scholarships for our program, but payment plans can be made through the student accounts, but only eligible for students who enroll at the beginning of a semester. So even though we run on eight week sessions, which we have two eight week sessions in one semester, the, the payment, the university payment plan is only eligible for students who start at the beginning of the semester. So a student that would start in August or January, but it's not eligible for students who start in October or March. Perfect. Thank you, Christina. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me look for more questions. Uh, uh, that, that, this one is for me. Um, is there going to be a replay for this live meeting? I missed the first half part. No worries. We are recording this live session and we'll upload it to the Student World um, YouTube channel so you can go back there uh, and watch it again. Uh, if you had like any doubts or if you missed the first few minutes, you can rewatch it as, as much as you want and you can also share it with with people that you feel that they they would be interested in any of these programs. Um, here they are asking, how can we get the certificate if the program is online? So for all of our programs, uh, we do a, a certificate of completion and we will email you the certificate. If you want a physical copy, you will need to pay for the the shipping cost, which we have an agreement with a third party to send to. Terrific, thank you very much. Um, I know that we already talked about all the programs, but here they are asking if you have any career path um, English, English program, like for getting into the university. Like a, to make sure I understand, like a pathways or like a sort of program yes. to help. Okay. Um, so, yes, <laughs> so it's sort of. So we have a, an agreement with the School of Continuing Studies at Georgetown um, for their programs. If st students successfully complete our program through the highest level, they can, um, their English proficiency requirement can be waived for that um it's called an MPS program, which so is a master's in professional studies program. The English proficiency can be, the, the TOEFL test can be waived if a student successfully completes our program to the highest level. We do not have a program, it's called like a pathways program where students enroll in both English and academic classes at the same time. Perfect. Thank you very much, Christina. Um, here they also want to know, what is the next step after this live? What should I do to start the application? So we, can we, Regan, if I could bother you to put the uh, link tree, uh, my colleagues can have put a uh, link in the chat and that will lead you to our, um, all of our applications. So if you have any, if you want to uh, submit one of your, your applications, uh, follow the link and you can submit your application online today. Awesome. Perfect. Um, another question here is after the X um, weeks programs, because they, they vary, do I have to go straight back to my country or can I spend some um, more time in the U.S.? Yes. Yeah, so if you successfully complete our programs, uh, and you follow all the, the rules and the regulations on being in the F, on a Form I-20 and F-1 visa, once your program ends, you have 60 days to either leave the U.S. or to transfer to another program. Uh, this is called a 60-day grace period. So you'll have that 60 days. Many students do just travel around the U.S. You're eligible for that. Um, but once you leave the U.S., you cannot re-enter. Okay, perfect. On that 60 days, sorry to clarify. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Uh, the accommodation, do you offer any accommodation for the students? We have on-campus housing, but on-campus housing is very limited. Um, our, and plus our campus is not, our classes are not located on the main campus, but students who do, do live on campus can commute. Uh, but again, it is very limited, but we have a lot of resources for off-campus housing for students. 
Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, someone here is asking how much is this information? No, we, we're not charging for this live session. It is totally free. So no worries. <laughs> um, can you explain a bit better um, the visa process? I know that we have been through it, um, but just so they don't have any doubts about it. Yes. Um, so once you're admitted to any of our programs that require visa support, you'll work with me on submitting the, docu uh, the documents you need to apply for the Form I-20. And this includes uh, proof of financial support. So depending on the program will depend on how much you need to show in a bank statement. Um, you'll provide that. You'll provide a copy of the information page of your passport. And then we have an internal form. It's called the ELC Applicant Information Form. It's just a PDF that you fill out um, just to verify some information to help me when I issue the document for you. And if everything is approved, I'll issue the Form I-20. And it's Right now, we're currently allowed to still email the documents, so they are emailed within three to five three to five business days. Um, and then, once you receive the form I twenty, you'll take that to apply for the F one visa at your the local U S embassy or consulate in your home country. Uh, there, are, there's two additional fees you'll have to pay, and they're not through me; they're with the government. Uh, there's the CVIS I nine hundred one fee. And then there is the DS-160 fee, and that's the visa application fee. So you'll pay both of those. You'll submit all the documents that the embassy is requiring for the F-1 visa. Have your interview. Hopefully all goes well, and we'll see you on campus. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, here is another question. Um, is an English exam or test necessary to get into the programs? Thank you for this question. Um, I noticed several people asking if they need to give an IELTS or TOEFL score to study with us. Most of the programs that we describe to you today are English language programs. So you are studying to improve your English. You do not need to give us a TOEFL or IELTS score if you are studying to improve your English. We do have exams that we give all students prior to beginning our English language programs um, to determine your proficiency level so we can put you in the right class. This English test is required, but we give this test to you as a program after you submit your application. I'll let Suzanne tell us a little bit more about some of the other programs as well. Thank you, Stephanie. Susan, yeah. Thank you, Stephanie. There we go. Sorry about that. We have a delay. Uh, yes, for the other programs, we don't have specific requirements, but for the graduate studies program, the English skills for graduate students, we do expect and ask that you have been hopefully admitted into a graduate program. And so that would uh, answer the question about what the language sc uh, skill scores are necessary for that. And then for the TEFL certificate program, we do uh, expect that you do have a fairly strong skill set in English. And so that would probably be an IELTS of uh, at least a seven. Perfect. Okay, thank you very much, Susan. Mm, let me let me look for more questions. This is also about the English test. Um, how can I join the online course? So for the online, um, I'm just going to assume the American Conversational English program, that three week part time program. Uh, if you follow the link tree web uh, link that my colleague Regan put in the chat box, and maybe he can graciously put it again, um, it, there was a link on there to apply for the three week, and it's an online or virtual program. So you just have to fill out the the registration online, pay for the course, and that actually registers you in it, and then that's it. And we'll follow up with the confirmation as well as a Zoom link to when, for for when the classes begin. Awesome. Um, another question that I hear is like repeating a lot, and I just want to like take it out of the of the of the question stuff is that is it possible to get a job while studying an English program? 
Yes, it is possible, um, but there are a lot of rules and regulations for it. Um, one, the biggest one, as an F1 student, a student on an F1 visa, you cannot uh, work off campus. That is a violation of the visa. If you work off campus, and I've made aware of it, you are, your I-20 is terminated and you have to leave immediately. Um, it's a negative violation, so it can actually affect you re-entering the U.S. Late, at a later date. But if you want to work on campus, you can. Um, you can work up technically up to 20 hours uh, as an international student. But we advise students, if you must, one, you should try not to work. But if you must work and have a part-time job on campus as a, enrolled in our programs, we prefer you to work no more than 10 hours. Just because you're in class Monday through Thursday, like 20 hours a week. Um, so if, if, once you add in your class time and then your homework afterwards, there's not much extra room to have an on-campus job. Perfect, thank you very much, Christina. That's very interesting. Um, can I transfer to another university uh, like to, to do like a college, a, a BA degree? after the language course ends? Yes, so many of our students actually enroll in our program. And then once they uh, complete our program to the highest level, they do transfer to many other universities within the DC area and just actually across the US in general. So yes, you can transfer to another school. Awesome, thank you very much. I think that that's all from my side, for my questions. I don't know if you guys see any, any um, anything interesting on the questions app that maybe I, I didn't see. I just want to um, address a couple of questions I saw about studying other degrees. So again, the Georgetown English Language Center um, it delivers programs for studying English language and teaching English language, but we do not have any access to other degree programs. Um, many of our students study with us before they transfer to another university, like Christina said, um, but we are not connected to the main campus of Georgetown with the graduate degree, PH degree programs. Our programs are designed to help you prepare before you go to those programs, um, but you do not start in those programs with us. Perfect, thank you for clarifying that, Stephanie. Perfect, guys, so I guess we, will, we have reached the end of this live session. Um, I want to thank all the students for joining us today, for sharing with us a little bit of their days. I hope that this uh, being a uh, very, helpful for you and i hope to see you in georgetown very soon and thank you um to all the presenters for for sharing with us all this valuable information thank you guys thank you everyone for coming today thank you and see you next time <laughs>